Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you all of my curriculum fails for the year of 2021 to 2022. So I cannot wait to share with you guys all of my curriculum fails in today's video. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I am a homeschooling mom to three girls, ages 10, three, and two. I'm in my second year of homeschooling. So you guys, before I start today's video, I wanna give a huge disclaimer. If I mention any curriculum that is working well for you and your family, Please don't let my experiences and my opinions of this curriculum discourage you from using what you already have and are loving and is working in your household. I just want to make that big disclaimer because I do not want anyone to leave this video feeling like you have to change everything up in your homeschool based off of my experiences with these curriculums. So um, yeah, <laughs> so you guys, this video, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a really hard one for me to make. However, I really feel like I need to make this video because um, if you guys have followed me along my second year of homeschooling, you would have noticed that my major problem in my homeschool was really trying to find a curriculum that was going to work well with my daughter. Um, I feel like every home homeschooler has this year um, that they go through this and this year my second year of homeschooling was the year that I had a lot of curriculum fails however you guys I am really blessed and happy that I had those fails because if I didn't I wouldn't be at the place where we are in our homeschool today where things are just working and they're flowing and I feel so blessed that we are family at this point so um, yeah so you guys uh, let's go ahead and get into the curriculum fails of course as you guys already know I I have uh, notes in my phone. Um, that's just how I roll here. <laughs> and I wanna make sure uh, I keep this video as short and concise and to the point as I possibly can uh, for you. So you guys, um, also too, I don't have any physical copies of this curriculum to show you. I sold most of these curriculum pieces. I was able to get money fr back from the curriculum to be able to purchase a uh, new curriculum. So I'm really happy that I wasn't out any finances or anything like that. So I don't have any like physical copies to show you. However, I do have a lot of flip throughs that I can put in the uh, video today. So uh, you guys will be able to uh, get a little glance inside of how these curriculums do look on the inside if I do have some uh, flip throughs uh, on my hard drive. So, okay, <laughs> now let's go ahead and get into the video. So you guys, my first curriculum fail of the year uh, was a math curriculum fail. And honestly, I really feel like it wasn't really a fail once you hear uh, everything. So we started off our year using Singapore Dimensions Math 4A. The pros about Singapore Dimensions is that it is great in abstract, mental, and conceptual math. It is great for a mathematically inclined child. The lessons are colorful and engaging, and the teacher's guide, you guys, in Singapore Dimensions is like laid out so beautifully. I mean, if you need a math curriculum that's going to hold your hand, that teacher guide is definitely holds your hand when it comes to teaching Singapore Dimensions. Singapore Dimensions math is a different way of math versus our regular traditional math that we have learned here in the United States. Uh, and uh, with it being such a different type of math and a different way that math concepts is bring is brought about I really love how they made that teacher's guide very thorough for a parent who hasn't learned math concepts so in that way they're still able to teach their uh, child which is uh, beautiful um I like that they have the black line masters as far as like extra resources online for free that you can print off that goes along with the Singapore Dimensions math. Another thing um, that I liked about it is, is that Singapore Dimensions math is now introducing a uh, video lessons, So you can buy the Singapore Dimensions, also uh, get the subscription for the video lessons if that's something that you are uh, looking for. So you guys, um, this is so sad. My only con about Singapore Dimensions, honestly, is that it did not personally fit the season of life that I'm in. I have two very busy toddlers. I am busy all day long. And uh, this math was too teacher intensive for me. It took me about an hour to get through a lesson with my daughter uh, because she did not start off Singapore Dimensions from the very beginning. We were coming in it at fourth grade. So it 
it was a lot of concepts that she's never seen before that I had to introduce to her. Um, but I will say I did see fruit coming from Singapore Dimensions the time that we did spin with it. Some of the concepts she learned about place value in Singapore Dimensions, she actually still uses to this day because uh, it just was beautifully laid out. Um, if I didn't have my two toddlers and I had more time to dedicate to math, honestly, you guys, I really don't think that I would have stopped using Singapore Dimensions Math. Um, with that being said, Singapore Dimensions Math may be a math that I might go to when it comes to uh, homeschooling my younger two kids just because I really loved and enjoyed the program. Before I gave a final quick to Singapore Dimensions Math, I did try the video lessons for my daughter. They do have the free samples to see if that might work out for her. However, she told me she understood the concepts better when I taught them to her and I used a teacher guide. Um, and at the end of the day, you guys, I really just couldn't commit that time to allow uh, the Singapore Dimensions to really be used in its full effect. So that really was my only con about it. I was really sad to hang up that particular career curriculum uh, but I just had to for the season of life I'm in if I still was trying to hold on to it I know we would not be as far along in math as we are now so two other math curriculums that did not work for us I recently made a video about it I will go ahead and link it in the i cards and in the description box below uh, a Becca arithmetic and the good and the beautiful the good and the beautiful simply math four did not work for us um i made a whole video about that um and i went into further detail however in this video i'm just gonna read briefly my cons and my pros about it and um yeah so abeka arithmetic four my cons was that it advanced too quickly and i didn't like the teacher's lesson plan i really felt like it didn't hold my hand as much as i would have liked it to when teaching harder concepts um if the abeka arithmetic did not go so fast i could see myself still using that curriculum uh, i love the repetition that it allows and it gives the kids to actually master uh arithmetic my uh, pros is that it is a solid curriculum. Uh, my daughter, you guys, I never disclosed this here on my channel, but I'm going to uh, let you guys know this here. After my daughter finished the Abeka Arithmetic 3, I had to give her, a, what is it, a standardized test in our first year of homeschooling because that is the year that Georgia requires you to test your children. I was very nervous about giving her that standardized test. However, I was very pleased with her math scores. After finishing Abeka Arithmetic 3, my daughter placed in sixth grade math on the CAT exam. And I cannot believe she tested so well. And um, I did not realize uh, how strong and solid Abeka Arithmetic was. I feel like that was why it was so hard for me to let that math go because I seen the fruit of that math uh, just by us using it consistently for our first year of homeschooling. However, uh, like it comes a season where you do have to put things down and they no longer work for you. And our season with Abeka, that's just what happened. I really feel like uh, the reason why it probably didn't work is that I do know that they did an update on the Abeka Arithmetics grades K through three. However, they are slowly making updates on the higher elementary level grades. And since they didn't make that update, I feel like if the update was made the abeka arithmetic probably would be great because i really enjoyed abeka arithmetic three it was great it was solid it was thorough um and i really love seeing the fruits from it um so yeah all right so as far as the good and the beautiful simply math my pros about it i feel like it's beautiful I mean, if it's in its name, uh, I feel like the lessons, they seem to be very fun and engaging. They had a different interactive way to teach math, um, which I enjoyed. However, my daughter didn't. And um, I went further in that in my other video. Um, the video lessons, you guys, they were awesome. I loved how they bought in real life math concepts. Uh, they were visually engaging. Um, and ultimately i loved it too because it allowed the kids to have a sense of independence when it comes to math for them to be able to watch their video lesson and get straight on into their lesson and uh mixed practice the cons i felt like uh the good and the beautiful it really lacked a good spiral uh practice in their lessons i feel like their lessons was kind of bouncy and scattered i feel like they would talk about fractions in one lessons two lessons they would do geometry and then they would come back to fractions and i really didn't see like a systematic way in which concepts were built upon in the simply good and beautiful math 
Okay, you guys, if you made it this far, then <laughs> those were all of my math curriculum fails this year. So let's go ahead and get into language arts and my curriculum fails for uh, language arts. And just as I have some with math, I have some with language arts too. <laughs> okay. So you guys, um, we started off our school year using the Good and Beautiful course book level four and the readers. The pros about the Good and Beautiful um, language arts, I would say, is that they're very strong in uh, grammar and the diagramming of sentences. It exposes children to a variety of literary uh, devices and elements in such a younger uh, elementary age. Because for level four, I really feel like they, they incorporate a lot of literary devices that I haven't seen yet introduced in some of the curriculum that I have used. So I really feel like they were strong in that. The lessons, again, they were beautiful. Um, they were fun, they were engaging. I really feel like it pulls the kids in. Uh, the good and the beautiful uh language arts it incorporates so many subjects i mean you have your art you have your geography your spelling your grammar your reading your literature so it's really just everything all in one uh course curriculum so you're able to get a lot of subjects touched on uh at once um the cons i felt like the good and the beautiful um language arts i really feel like it lacks diversity i feel like it lacks diversity in its geography in its readers, in its art selection. I feel like the Good and the Beautiful is not, uh, if you're looking for an inclusive curriculum, I feel like you're not really gonna find it there in the Good and the Beautiful. I have noticed in some of their updates, they are doing a lot better in adding in um, a little bit more of uh, different types of arts and things as they're rolling in their updates. But some of the curriculum that they still have out there, I feel like it does lack uh, diversity. Um, I feel like the lessons can be very lengthy. When my daughter was doing the Good and the Beautiful, our first two weeks of homeschooling in our second year, it was taking her a whole hour to complete the uh, course book, the uh, spelling and writing workshop, the reading, the assigned reading that they had her doing. So it was very lengthy in the amount of time that it was taking her to finish her language arts. Um, and my daughter, she did not enjoy the readers. She felt like the readers was very boring. She felt like she couldn't relate to the characters in the readers. And I feel like uh, that's something that's very important to me is to allow uh, my daughter to be able to see herself through uh, the lenses of the characters that she is reading about, especially when uh, you want your kids to get introduced to uh, good literature. You want them to be enthusiastic about reading. I feel like it does come to a point, especially as they get older, where they are gonna have to read pieces that they may not like. Um, but at this young age in early elementary, guys, or upper elementary, I still feel like uh, they should be reading things that they enjoy and that they like. Ultimately, I steered away from The Good and the Beautiful because I felt like it took away my daughter's uh, creativity. My daughter is very strong in writing and she automatically does writing throughout the day. Every afternoon, I don't have to tell her to do it. She just wants to do creative writing. She wants to do story writing. Uh, she's very strong in that aspect. So with me giving her this all in coming sin uh, curriculum, it really was taking away the time that my daughter uh, would have spent on doing something that she naturally loves into this. When she was doing the Good and the Beautiful course book, she was just tired at the end of the day and she didn't want to think about uh, writing. And it's just crazy because uh, uh, that's all I see her do all the time. Um, so I really was looking for a language arts curriculum that was going to be uh, more thorough and concise and less scattery when it comes to the grammar concepts. I really probably was just looking for just uh, something that was separate, just a good, uh, strong grammar and uh, composition English. So um, ultimately, we did steer away from the good and the beautiful language arts pretty early in our uh, homeschooling uh, year in our second year. Okay, you guys, we then went to Masterbooks Language Lessons for a Living Education. I used Masterbooks Language Lessons for a Living Education in our first year of homeschooling. And I really feel like if you're just starting off homeschooling uh, from the beginning, I really feel like Masterbooks is a good curriculum to just start off on. The lessons are very short, sweet, simple. Masterbooks uh, Language Lessons for a Living Education is very open and go curriculum. Uh, it incorporates, if you are looking for uh, something that's a Christian curriculum, it is 
is a Christian curriculum, it incorporates the Bible in almost every lesson. Um, I really feel like uh, Masterbooks Language Lessons for Living Education is a great curriculum for someone who does and likes unschooling where you're going to be doing other aspects like of your literature and your reading and you just need something that's going to be short, sweet, concise uh, language lessons. I feel like that's where Masterbooks is a strength for uh, that Charlotte Mason type of flair uh, homeschooler. Um, my cons about uh, master books is that I feel like uh, the lessons are sometimes bouncy and they're kind of scattered when it comes to the grammar. I feel like it does lack the uh, mastery for uh, certain grammar concepts and things. I feel like using master books is a good spine. However, you will find yourself having to grab other resources to supplement it. And if that's something that you're okay with, then master books is going to work perfectly fine for you. Um, I was okay in our first year of homeschooling, kind of gathering pieces to. Uh, uh, supplement master books as I was kind of getting used to curriculum and I'm gonna tell you guys master books you know it did serve me very well in my first year of homeschooling I feel like uh, when the good and the beautiful uh, language arts did not work for me I was so quick to go back to master books because it did work out for us uh, however um, However, we ultimately found a better fit when it came to grammar and composition in our homeschool. But you guys, master books, it still will have like a special place in my heart. It was where I started off from and I feel like it gave me the confidence that I needed as a homeschooling mom and a parent starting off homeschooling and um, it's it's great. I still love it and I definitely would recommend master books, especially if you're a beginner. Okay, you guys. Um, my uh, last curriculum fail, and I really don't know if this was a curriculum fail or a preference, was the Good and the Beautiful Science Units. Um, the pros about the Good and the Beautiful Science Units was that they are very uh, beautiful, they're engaging, they're fun, they have a lot of activities and experiment. They're very, it's very experiment heavy. Uh, I feel like the Science Units are uh, very much Charlotte Mason type of flair where you're uh, reading, you're using your hands. Uh, it's not any like writing or questions or comprehension checks or anything like that. You're really presenting the information information to your kids you're really uh um learning science with your hands and um yeah that is really uh the pros about the curriculum i really enjoy of the science units those little mini readers i think that's what they're called i really enjoyed those mini readers because they were really jam-packed with uh, good information um when you are going over the science with the kids my cons about uh, the Good and the Beautiful Science Units was that I, I was personally looking for something that was gonna give like some type of quiz, test, written comprehension. I still was looking for that type of traditional approach when it came to uh, science. Uh, again, I live in a state of Georgia and I have to test my daughter. If I did not live in a state that required standardized testing, I think that I will be okay with this approach with science. However, I know she has to get tested. So I have to be able to find a way for me to understand and see that she is gaining a, a true knowledge in these areas. And I know I could have come up with, you know, written comprehension, things on my own, little quizzes and things like that on my own. But I really feel like that takes away from a curriculum being open and go and ready for you. Uh, and that is that was definitely one of my major cons about it. I felt very overwhelmed with the amount of activities and experiments in each lesson. Now, if you have all school age kids, I really would say you would be perfectly fine using this curriculum. Uh, but if you're like me and you have like one school age kid and, and very younger kids or, you know, things like that, I really feel like uh, you may want to like break up the lessons into like maybe two or three days while doing them. Don't do a whole lesson at once because again, it can be very lengthy. It could be very time consuming. And um, if you do use the science units, I would definitely say get everything you need and that whole unit all the experiments all the every little thing that it says that you need in your supply list that master supply list at the beginning just get it at the beginning of the year prep the whole entire unit not just week by week prep the whole entire thing have everything ready and then i feel like you probably would be very successful in using those science units however uh, like i said before um i was looking for a little bit more in science and that's what ultimately uh led me to make the decision to stop using the good and beautiful science units 
So you guys, I really hope today's video wasn't uh, too long. I really hope that um, <laughs> you were able to really uh, gain a sense of all of my curriculum fails and why certain curriculums did not work in our household. In our household. Uh, you guys, again, like I said before, all of these curriculums that I have mentioned in today's video, I really feel like they all have pros. Again, they all have cons too. I am learning in my homeschooling journey that no curriculum is perfect. However, you have to find the close to perfect fit for you and make that work in your homeschool. So you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoy these like curriculum review videos. If you are enjoying them, please give me a thumbs up. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more. I hope to see everybody in my next video. Bye.